Hi there, I have an infinite sum problem for you and let's see how we can solve it. So in general when we have a series we define a partial sum sequence which is called Sn or we, we can say Sk and so this will be instead of adding infinitely number infinitely many terms like in series we just add up to k so here it's we are adding just the first k terms and I'm just writing the same sequence here and m plus 2 and if this sum is convergent so if it's like an equal to s I know that this is going to be equal to limit as k goes to infinity of sk so if I can find the general rule for this sk and I can take a limit of it then this will be equal to my problem so I'm looking for s so let's open this finitely many termed uh, sum. So if I put n is equal to 1, this will be 1 over 1 times 3. If I put n is equal to 2, this will be minus 1 over 2 times 4 plus 1 over 3 times 5. And it's going pl minus plus like this up to, if I put n is equal to k, this will be minus 1 to the k plus 1 over so this will be just k times k plus 2. So this is sk. It's hard to take a limit here. Uh, I, I, it's, there is not an ideal way to group these terms here because I don't know if the last term is positive or negative. Let's instead, let's check s2k because if I put s is equal to s2k, now I can I know what is the last term because if I put instead of k, if I put 2k, this is going to end up with a minus term, okay? So I'm writing as 2k and I will also group terms as positives and negatives. So let's see, I have 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 and this is going up to, so if I put as 2k, this is going to give me minus and so if I, if I put s is equal to 2k minus 1 this is going to give me a plus so I'm just putting instead of s instead of k I put 2k minus 1 so this is going to be 2k minus 1 and here if I put this is going to be 2k plus 1 so these are my positive terms and I also have uh, almost as much as negative terms. So I have 1 over 2 times 4 plus 1 over 4 times 6 and it's going up like this up to so if I put k is equal to 2k here it will be indeed minus 1 to the 2k plus 1 so I took it nine minus parenthesis so this is all right and I can put just 2k 2k plus 2. So, why did I group them like this? Because now, if I look, all of these terms have same signs, first of all, in both of parentheses, and they all have two difference at the denominators. And, well, if you're solving this kind of integrals, you will, of course, know this method, that if you have n m plus 2, you can write it as sum of 1 over n and 1 over m plus 2 with uh, some extra constants 1 over m plus 2 they will also get constants like a b but here this is an easy case so we can directly say since this difference is 2 this will be 1 over 2 times 1 over n minus 1 over m plus 2 we can also check it from this point if I just do this part I will have a 2 at the top part so they will cancel so now I'm taking both of these parentheses I'm and I'm re rewriting them. So I have S2k, this was just a node. So this is going to be equal to, so I will have 1 over 2 from all terms and times. So I have uh, here, if I put n is equal to 1, this is going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3 for the first term. And for the second, it will be 1 over 3 minus 1 over 5. And if you notice, uh, let's write one more term, 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7. I have all of these middle terms are canceling out. Here I will have 1 over, 1 over 7, so they will also cancel out. 
it will go up to, so on the last term, I'm going to have 1 over 2k minus 1 plus 1 over 2k plus 1. So this is equal to my first parenthesis. And let's look at the second parenthesis. This will follow exactly the same rule. This time I have minus and I will get 1 over 2 from all terms. So this is going to be 1 over 2 minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6. And it will go up to 1 over 2k minus 1 over 2k plus 2. So again, all of these middle terms are cancelling out here. I also didn't say it for this part, but everything goes except the first and last term. So if I just regroup all of the remaining terms, I have one over in one, one over two parentheses. This is one plus. Uh, sorry, this is this should actually be minus. So I'm writing positive negative positive negative. Uh, this should be negative. So I have one minus one over two k plus one. And I, from here, I have minus 1 over 2. And here, this is going to be plus 1 over 2k plus 2. So I have sk as 2k. And let's check limit as, s goes, uh, limit as k goes to infinity as 2k. But... Here I will give you one more note because I'm looking at S2K, but in the beginning I said I should look at the SK limit. So I will explain you why I'm only checking S2K. If I check this limit, this is just going to be 1 over 2 times. And here this term will go to 0, this term will also go to 0. You should notice that I'm adding finitely many terms, just it will be one term, one term. They are all, they all have the limit of 0. So it will be 1 over infinite at both of them. So I will have only inside, I will have 1 over 2, which will be equal to 1 over 4. And this is actually equal to my answer. But let's see why this is true. I only checked limit S2k. I said limit S2k is equal to S. We know that if we have... Uh, this limit exists if limit k goes to infinity sk exists then i have to have that if this limit exists and this is equal to k i have to have this condition limit k goes to infinity all of the subgroups of this s to sk uh, so we can also say s2k minus one and s2k they are all gonna converge to the same number okay so if I know this limit exists, which I still don't know actually, I assumed if this limit exists, this is going to be equal to that, and I found this limit is equal to 1 over 4. So now, in the end, if I show that this infinite sum is convergent, then I will know that this limit exists, so this limit is going to be equal to this limit, and this answer is going to be 1 over 4. So let's show minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n n plus 2 is convergent so here n is greater or equal than 1 well i can just do absolute value uh, absolute convergent test i can just look at its absolute value and i know that if a series is absolutely convergent it's going to be convergent so i can say this thing is just going to be equal to so this thing is just 1 because minus 1 to the anything if i take absolute value this is going to be equal to 1 over and this is positive so i can just write it without parenthesis n n plus 2 n is going from 1 to infinity and i can say so if i can bound it up from upside and i will uh, in if i have a something if i have something convergent then i will be done so i can increase the top part or decrease the bottom at the denominator i have n squared plus 2n i know that 2n is positive so i can just say this is going to be less than 1 over n squared because n squared plus 2n is greater than n squared n is greater or equal than 1 so and i know that this is convergent 
uh, by the p-test, p is equal to 2. I even know this sum, this is one of the most famous sums, this is uh, solution of the basal problem. Uh, so I know this series is convergent, I don't need to know its sum, but it's just extra knowledge. So I know that this my sequence, my, se uh, my series absolute value is bounded from upside and I know that anything uh, anything positive, like I'm adding only positive terms, this is also greater or equal than zero. So I know this series is bounded and therefore I can say this is going to be convergent. So this is convergent. S exists. Okay, I said this limit exists. So therefore, this limit exists and my sum is going to be equal to 1 over 4. Let's say this is equal to 1 over 4. And that's the answer.